Right, welcome back, 0K fans, and this remains the June 2016 1v1 tournament, and this remains an Annalise at Dawn, and I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333 and after the last very quick match, just gonna see what's going on with Akinem and King Raptor, because I want to see if this match is lasting a little bit longer. But frankly, I don't know. Gonna find out very rapidly, because we're gonna be playing catch-up. So, Shieldbot versus... Light Vehicles, Scorcher Base, although another Slash Push, we do see the Slash Push, this is what I expect. Slash Push is a little bit closer to Aquanim's base, a little bit closer to the Northwest player's base. But not really how I'd expect things to go. The last match, I mean, is this is this is typical. This is all the way I expect things to be set up. And King Raptor now setting up for... Basically, a bit of a protracted fight. King Raptor is taking the northeast. Akram's starting to take the south, but King Raptor's also contesting the south. So that center, this is how Avalanche often goes: is you have these longer protracted fights, trench warfare in the center with a bit of flanking going on to the northeast and southwest. This is what usually happens at higher level play. I mean, if basically, if the early slasher push doesn't work, if there's no cheese that does anything, you get into artillery, you get into defense, well, static defenses, which means artillery, you get into flanking, which is what's happening with these bandits from King Raptor over to the north, and the slashers and scorcher over to the south, well, slasher and scorcher to the south as well, trying to help for Aquinum, but not really doing too much. One downside that vehicles have in this map is this area right here, this whole cliff is vehicle impassable, but bot passable. So someone going for bots can much more easily go from the center to the south and then flank around, whereas someone going vehicles, they have to push through the lane either straight from their base or straight down from their base. They can't go through directly. So right now, Akronim is basically just trying to push King Raptor's center back because Akronim can't really go to the south that effectively. King Raptor does have the attack to the north, which didn't really do much. Got completely wrecked by the Lotuses. So overall, King Raptor right now is, I think, at a slight advantage just for essentially nullifying the, the mobility advantage of light vehicles. Also getting the light vehicle themselves, getting Impaler to help push through the defenses. And with the Racketeers getting that open, unfortunately the Gauss turret being a bit of... Gauss and Faraday combined being a massive pain not giving these forces any real breathing room, but I say it's giving them enough breathing room. Not much, but it's probably enough. Slowdown is going to help out. Gauss turret still being a problem. Faraday turret being less of a problem thanks to the slowdown. And both of them are not in their armor state. Faraday's down. Gauss should be down soon. Nothing changing in the south, though. So, really, this fight is the only one that Akronim's really invested in. And that Gauss turret able to hold the line for now. King Raptor with the Impalers coming up, which will help a bit. Getting rid of one of the defenders. I thought it was a work for a second. No. Getting rid of one of the defenders. The Caretakers are really priority targets. And Aquanum also with their own Impalers to try to deal with this. The Caretaker going down. Or, see, Stardust going down as well. That Impaler, I don't think we'll be able to get rid of the Stardust completely. Wait, what is the Impaler's damage? 800 actually would have gotten rid of the Stardust had it hit at the time, but it got rid of the Caretaker, and I totally agree with that. Caretakers are a big enough threat. I mean, considering basically they keep everything else alive to the point of immortality, practically, there's no real reason not to do that. Unfortunately, once again, another Faraday out, but fortunately for King Raptor, it has been stunned out as well, so everything being stunned out. King Raptor should be able to get rid of the Faraday, no problem. Get rid of the Gauss, no problem. Get rid of the Stardust, no problem. And there it goes. Stardust is down thanks to the Impaler. King Raptor continuing to push forward with this. And their commander joining the fight. Level 2 commander, just Beam Laser. Level 2, oh, it's Assault Commander. Or Strike Commander. I mean, I was pointing out before in Tartarus, we don't see that very often in 1v1. But we are seeing it for a push. So, we don't see it very often, but doesn't mean we never see it. And I can see why we're seeing it now, too, because King Raptor thinking, small map, I want to make sure my commander can actually fight if need be. Admittedly, the commander is probably a bit too far up front. Aquanum does have an economy advantage, so if King Raptor loses the commander, that's a lot of potential reclaim being lost. That's a lot of economy metal, just straightforward metal being lost. But King Raptor, with the Raptors, pushing in to save the day. 
However, at the same time, Akinem, with the southern flanking attack, getting repelled by the Lotuses. And the center is falling for Akinem. Having lost that whole defensive position, Akinem needs to fall back, and they didn't really have a secondary defensive position. Defense in depth is not usually something that a lot of 0k players invest in, because, well, it's kind of expensive. And you're also expecting that you're going to lose your first line of defense, which usually you don't. And usually if you do, you have mobile units behind it. And Akinem taking advantage of their mobile units, but those Racketeers are being a pain. King Raptor's shield vehicle mix here proving to be a very effective combination. I mean, the Outlaws aren't in here, so we don't have the slow effect, but the Racketeers alone, just for the Racketeers, it is proving extremely effective. Unfortunately, Thug and Raptor are a little bit roll overlapped, so this is basically just a larger Raptor army. Not a terrible thing, but it is worth pointing out the Thugs aren't helping out from a diversity perspective. They are just helping out from an additional firepower perspective, basically being shielded Raptors. Like, I think they have the same health, actually. Now, Thugs are a little bit healthier if you count the shields as more health. Raptors have a bit less health. But, of course, that's discounting the fact that EMP and all, and all sorts of things like that do get through shields, no problem. However, that being said, King Raptor, they have to fall back a bit more. Akinem is able to get through with mobile units. Those outlaws being a wonderful mind clearer, but overall, the line still holds. Akinem able to retake their defensive point, probably retake the hill they built. And I'm guessing there's going to be another Stardust on that hill. That's probably how things are going to go. And those Racketeers, how many Racketeers are there? There's two Racketeers... Both of them on the front lines, one up here, one down here. That's effective as always. You really want those Racketeers. They are super useful. The one thing I am a bit concerned about, though, is that the Racketeers are kind of not defended at all. There's really nothing stopping Akinem from just rushing forward and killing them. I mean, King Raptors kind of fallen behind. Their economy disadvantage is really becoming apparent. Reclaim has been attempted, but honestly, Aquanim is able to reclaim a lot more. And King Raptor, are they reclaiming a lot here? I mean, I see there's some reclaim, which is good. That They need that. They desperately need reclaim. And King Raptor able to push that point. It's coming down to mobile units, so right now Aquanim has no real recourse if their mobile army has been pushed back, and given that most of their mobile army is Wolverines, and thus can't really fight up front, King Raptor comparatively does not need a particularly large force, on top of the fact that Racketeers are s just stunning everything out, or disarming everything. So, right now, King Raptor is actually punching well above their weight. Or their army, rather, is punching well above its weight, because that army does not have to worry about numbers as much. It is well set up to just push back Akinem, keep Akinem from pushing forward indiscriminately, while also not being particularly big and expensive, which means King Raptor can get the reclaim fields, can get the big and expensive units once the reclaim has been taken. And does have the bandits up. Are they gonna be going for raiding with this? I don't know. Akinem going for an air switch. Actually, also went for Cloaky, but it looks like that really didn't accomplish much. Double check. Are there any size? I do not see any size in at least any suspect locations. I mean, that's the one reason I can see someone going for Cloaky, but Thunderbird coming in here, totally reversing the game here. One of the Raptors being stunned out, the other one vulnerable to attack. King Raptor not pulling it back and is going to die right now. And the rest of King Raptor's forces have another five seconds before they are able to attack again. So the Racketeers getting the tables turned on them. Now the Bandit's going to do their best to get rid of the Raptors, and it will be relatively effective. But still, that is painful. Now King Raptor has to deal with the Thunderbirds. And another one coming in. The attack's gonna be probably less devastating. The bandits aren't in the right position. But at the same time, the levelers making short work of the bandits. And once again, King Raptor's commander being stunned out. And when they're stunned out, they don't produce resources. So really, King Raptor's commander's as good as dead as far as their resource goes. As far as the economy goes. Aquanim, I think, will be able to push in here. King Raptor had a really good shot, but Aquanim's air switch was... Pretty ideal. That was the best thing to do right there. And King Raptor, unfortunately, not reclaiming as aggressively as they could have been, which meant they didn't get that thousand or so medal, which is right here. They didn't get that medal. And Akron's going to have that no problem. Although Akron might do what they often do, which is try to build a caretaker to take it first. But yeah, that's the thing. King Raptor had the reclaim. It could have helped, but really just had an economic disadvantage the entire game. Never really took the south. 
No, and gunship on top of air? Not sure if Acronym is trying to options like that. I think that Acronym is probably not going to keep... Oh, they might. I don't know. Acronym doesn't really have the money. But yeah, that was... That was a good attempt to hold the center. But unfortunately for King Raptor, they got Thunderbirded. And I mean, that was kind of close too, because I think King Raptor was just about to set up to grab the reclaim to make a big push. And it didn't quite work out. So Aquanim takes that match as well. So we have seen both Aquanim and... Well, North Chilean G take it. And that is actually it for round three. So round three is done. We're moving on to round four, which is going to be Iced Coffee. Not sure I'm going to cast there, though, because I haven't actually gotten the results to completely update yet. Not sure why it's... North Chilean G. But yeah, King Raptor, it really was the Southwest. I mean, King Raptor had the Northeast, no problem, but the Southwest was the problem. The Southwest was Aquinas for most of the game. King Raptor didn't really push it. They got pushed from the Southwest and then left that ground seeded. Waiting for the brackets to update. Not sure what's going on. North Chilean G beats Space Tuna, so you can just update that as soon as you want. So right now, is anyone still undefeated? Yes, Knuckle Base and Aquanim both undefeated. So they're probably going to go in the next round, which I... Well, I did say I kind of wanted to see, but I also... I'm really looking forward to whatever's in round five. The top two players are round five, so we'll see. And who is next? Okay. So we have... I'm curious how Ultimate Firestar plays, although it will mean recasting North Chilean G. And I feel like I'm going to miss Orphelius if I don't. Yeah, I think I might have to do some repeats at this point. That or do Don versus Dinefrund, which could be interesting. But... Uh, tough call. Tough call. 